Hey folks, it's Valerie here, and I am gonna talk to you today again about tomatoes. I know you guys, I talk about tomatoes a lot, but they're my fave, so we're just gonna go over it real quick today. Just some simple uh, tips and tricks on how to take care of your tomatoes so you can get the best possible overall harvest and yield out of them, and just uh, how I like to keep my tomatoes. And again, I know I've mentioned it before, but we'll go over the four varieties of tomatoes that I'm growing this year and how they're doing so far. It's gonna be real quick and easy, and I hope you guys learned something new. Let's do it. We had to move inside because it started to rain, but alas, we move forward. So first is my pink tie-dye tomato. This is my favorite variety so far just because it's been doing the best. If you wanna learn a little bit more about it, you can check out my other video called The Variety Show, episode one about tomatoes. Uh, but we won't get super into it, just know that this is that variety. So here is the plant right now. It is doing very, very well. I've noticed that this one has more of like a bushy type structure compared to some of the other ones that you'll see, like the Prudence Purple that is the other slicing tomato that I have that you'll see, um, whereas it doesn't have quite as many leaves coming off of the stalk, so this one just has more bushy appearance. I really like it. It's beautiful. Uh, this one is getting ready to move outside. It's going to rain for the next couple days, so I'm going to hold off. I don't want it to go in the ground um, and then have to have too much shock by a lot of rain right away. But I haven't done anything to this tomato yet on purpose so that I could show you guys what I'm going to do to get it ready to go in the ground uh, when the weather is nicer in a couple days. So let's do it. So you see the overall structure of this plant. It's got one solid stalk and then it's trying to create new shoots at this junction between this main stalk here and the branch coming out. Now what this would eventually do is it would create a whole new shoot, basically like this, but a smaller version of course, and it will go out and it'll flower and create fruit on a separate branch. What I'm doing with my tomatoes is that I'm gonna be tying them to like a post or a tree or something like that to continue growing them straight upwards and have a lot of support the entire time. So I don't want any of these side shoots coming out and creating new branches, so we're gonna get rid of those. Even if you aren't gonna grow your tomatoes the same way that I am, you're still gonna to wanna to go in and remove those shoots. Uh, because basically the plant's MO is to create flowers, create seeds, and then it's done. That's reproduction, right? But we wanna trick the plant into making more flowers, more seeds, bigger roots, bigger plant. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna remove these shoots to encourage the plant to continue to grow upwards instead of growing outwards in this direction with new shoots. We wanna just have to support this main stalk here. So we're gonna do that real quick, go through and remove these real easy. Just pull them off with your fingers. And like I said, you'll always find them in between the branch and the main stem there. Oops, don't do what I just did. See what I just did? I pulled off a bunch of material off of this branch here while I was trying to pull this out. No good, I just damaged that plant. Don't be stupid like me. Moving on now. We wanna go ahead and get rid of these lower branches. That's what we're gonna use our pruners for. So reason being, you really don't want anything that's gonna to be touching the ground when you plant it. Um, I am going to actually plant this probably up to about here. This might be close to the ground, but I have cages or I can tie it up. Um, and this is a nice, long, stronger branch, whereas this is a shorter branch. So anyway, I'm going to get rid of this. That promotes a lot of airflow. And um, as you can see, these lower leaves tend to be the first to go anyway. That one is either gotten eaten or is just starting to, to die back. Uh, same, same for this one as well. One thing I did want to mention real quick, make sure that if you're growing from seed indoors, you have your tomatoes outside for about a week or so before you plant them to harden them off, as they say. Get them used to changing temperatures, uh, wind, things like that, just so that they don't have as much transplant shock when they do go out in the garden. That's why at the beginning of this video, I was sitting out on my patio. First things first, get yourself a nice pair of pruners. 
Make sure that they're nice and sharp. It's actually gonna be a lot easier on the plant if you use something sharp than if you use something dull, and here's why. When you have something sharp, it's gonna make a nice slice through. It's gonna be even. It's gonna be easy for that plant to grow back over that area and repair itself. When you have something dull, what you actually end up doing is crushing down on the stem more than you do slicing it, and that'll damage a lot of the cells in the surrounding area versus only just making a clean cut where the plant only has to cover up those cells that were damaged on the outside, you're damaging cells on the inside with a duller blade as well. So make sure you're using something sharp. It's an easy thing to do. Just go pick up a brand new nice pair. Don't get something that's five bucks because it's not gonna be worth your money. Spend a little bit more, get something nice that's gonna last a while. This pair has a lifetime warranty, which I really like. So let's go ahead and take care of these lower branches. I'm just trying to make a nice clean cut that's going to give as little damage as possible to the plant. Here you go. Now the plant is a lot more open. It's not going to have as many pests and things. Um, climbing up on the leaves touching the ground once I plant it again I probably will plant it about to here to encourage uh, a larger root system to grow in the ground um, which is something you can do with your tomatoes you could potentially plant it up to here if you wanted to but I don't want uh, this branch here to be touching the ground uh, when I do plant it eventually this all these lower branches will go as it grows up you should have a lot of open space on the bottom of your tomato plants to encourage airflow and uh, discourage disease. A lot of diseases happen when the rain falls on the soil and the soil splashes up onto the plants. That's how uh, blight occurs. So if you can keep your branches high up off the ground, it's actually gonna be a lot more beneficial to your tomatoes. I know it seems a little backwards to be cutting things out, but we're actually going to end up with a healthier plant overall, a larger root system, and a larger yield of fruit in the end. Continuing to evaluate this plant, we see that it's got some damaged leaves. It's probably going to start to pre uh, create some flower buds in the next coming days, so we'll make sure to trim those out until the plant gets a little bit bigger. Uh, but you can see here, this is that main stalk that we're going to continue to grow up not like this little side bud that's coming off here, or you can see where I had trimmed it here. You can see there's a little shoot. So we'll pull that out as well. So I'll just finish trimming up this one. We'll move on to the next one. It's not, they're not all gonna be this talkative. We're just gonna real quick fly through the next three. Here's my Prudence Purple Slicing Tomato. And you'll see right off the bat how different it looks from the pink tie-dye. Like I was saying, it's got uh, less of a bushy looking structure. It's got these long branches with these big, beautiful leaves on the end. It's a gorgeous plant. Uh, real excited about this. Definitely needs some work, so let's get to it. Same deal for this one. We are gonna remove these lower branches, try to do as little damage as possible to this plant. This is an Asternia cherry tomato. Nice orange little cherry tomatoes. So I like this one as last because it kind of combines both the characteristics of the previous tomatoes into one. You see it's kind of like long and lanky like the purple, uh, Prudence Purple is, but also it's got a lot of these littler leaves like the pink tie-dye does. One thing I like about growing the different varieties is, is just comparing the, the different, you know, physical, phenotypical characteristics that come out with the different varieties of tomatoes. It's really interesting. You know, if you have children, definitely encourage them, you know, ask them questions. Why do you think this one looks different from this one? And, oh, you know, could we study them today and then tomorrow go around and try and identify them without any type of labeling going on? Make it fun. Make it a game. Get your kids interested in gardening. They'll love it. So this one we're going to remove this lower branch, we're going to take the shoots out, and uh, it doesn't look like any flowers are happening quite yet, so it'll be a quick easy one. Obviously we're going to get rid of this branch already, but if we didn't we would have cut out this leaf because it is dead. 
This one over here has got a little bit of damage right here. Not a huge issue though. I'm going to leave that one for now. Everything else looks pretty healthy. I had said at the beginning of this video I wanted to give you an update on how the four different varieties are doing. So you can see in the background there I have the Prudence Purple, Pink Tie-Dye, and the Asternia Cherry that we just went over. And I brought up from the basement a couple black cherry tomatoes to show you guys the size difference. They haven't been doing nearly as well for me as the other three have, so I probably won't be growing them again next year. They don't need a lot of work right now because I haven't started to harden them off yet, so there's not really a lot of damage. Um, they're still growing, so they're still focusing mainly on growing the main plants. So there aren't a lot of shoots going on quite yet. I still check them on a regular basis, but just wanted to give you a quick idea of how those are going so you can see how much smaller that they are. I hope this video gave you some insight on uh, how to take care of your tomatoes to produce a bigger harvest at the end of the summer. Uh, they're quick, they're easy. I grew all these from seed, so if I can do it, you can definitely do it. One quick note that I wanted to make, I did something stupid, so when I do something stupid, I like to share it with you guys so that you can learn from my mistakes. Well, the other day I planted 14 tomatoes in the garden, and I did all the work. I dug the holes, I put the stakes in, I did everything. I moved everything out, carefully transported it, watered them in, did all the work. But one thing that I didn't do, I didn't do the last and easiest step, it was so stupid. I didn't go through and I didn't trim my branches or I didn't put uh, tomato cages on them so that they could be lifted up off the ground. Let me tell you, I learned from that mistake because the next morning I came out and so many of the lower branches had been chewed by the slugs and everything out there. I was like, this is so stupid. This would have taken me probably about five minutes, put the tomato cages out, trim the branches, make sure nothing was touching the ground and I definitely paid for it. So it wasn't a huge deal. Um, the next morning I went through and propped everything up and now everything is doing well and there haven't been a whole lot of pest issues so far to speak of, so I'm thankful for that. But don't be stupid like me and do 90% of the work and then you get yourself in trouble because you couldn't finish the last 10%. You know, just get it all done at once. You're gonna feel real good about it. And then all you have to do after that is just, you know, every, week or so go out there and pick the shoots and the in the buds until you feel like they're ready to start producing as always thank you so much for checking out my video i really appreciate it i hope you learned something new um i hope that everybody is doing well take care of yourselves uh -huh.